This week on Creative Suite TV, we're going to be creating actions and droplets with Photoshop CS5. We're all too important and way too busy to be performing menial tasks. Photoshop can do all of that sort of stuff for us. So any repetitive task, this episode is going to show you how to use actions to do that. If you're a developer or you've got to create icons of any size, perhaps you might be using digital publishing suite, maybe you might be making an Air application or an Android application or even an iOS application. You need to resize your logo, your icon to a whole bunch of different sizes. Well, the action that we create today will then be converted into a droplet that will show you, that will create all of those different sizes for you. So it can save you a bucket of time if you're doing that sort of stuff. It can save you a bucket of time if you're doing anything repetitive. So I hope you sit back, enjoy the episode, hope you learn something, and we'll see you all again really soon. Well, I'm terribly sorry to moon you uh, just like this straight off the bat, but I needed a working file um, to go ahead and get started on. We're going to talk about creating actions, of course. So actions and droplets are batching uh, files for very repetitive tasks in Photoshop, and we can use Photoshop as a very powerful engine uh, to do this sort of thing. You can see over here on the right hand side I have the actions palette already set up. There's the default actions that come with Photoshop of course. Uh, many people like to share their actions also. Uh, they're the default ones um, that come with Photoshop. And of course here's a little folder uh, with actions in, inside it already. And you can see I've already gone ahead and created an action for icons, for making application icon. So if you're building an iPhone app or you're building an Android app or you're using Adobe's digital publishing solution, you need to create icons for that particular application. I've already made this um, action. We're going to come back and I'll show you how to make your own ones as well. But essentially what this does, if, if, we, if we have a look at it, it opens a particular file, which will be this moon file, resize the image and save it resize the image and save it because there's a whole bunch of different file size or different icon sizes required for these applications. It's very repetitive. Same file but we need it 512 by 512, uh, 114 by 114, um, all the way down to 29 pixels square. Okay, So very small uh, file size in the end. And then from our action, we can create a droplet. So every time we want to create a new uh, icon for a new application, we can use the droplet. Let me show you how it's going to work. I'll drop back out of my desktop, and here it is where my file is saved. And this is a Photoshop uh, droplet. Okay, it's got a little Photoshop thing there. All I do is I get my original file, wherever it is, and as you would suspect, drop it onto there. Photoshop will then magically run that action for me and then I go back to my desktop and here are all the different file size icons all labeled nicely. Let me zoom in so you can see 14 by 14, 50 by 50, whatever it is that's required, they're PNG files and Photoshop has tremendously created all of those moons for us. Isn't that wonderful? So I'm going to delete those. Okay. Back to Photoshop, how do we create uh, such, a, such a terrific application? Well, uh, such a terrific action. First steps first. Little folders here. It's always a good idea to create your own folder to put your action inside of. You can see I've got Mike's icon actions. I've got a folder already there. Uh, but to create your own folder is very simple. You just come down the bottom here and click, um, click that. Uh, little folder button and we'll call it um, uh, recording actions and I'll press OK. So I have that. Now all I need to do is press the new action button. Create new action, we'll give it a name uh, so we'll call this icons also. And now I'm just about to press record so I have to be quiet while I do this. Shh. Only joking, we don't need to do that. Now anything that we do here, you can see the little red record button is on. Anything we do from this point on 
will record that action. So if I go and change the image size, yes, it will record that action. If I change the color space, if I put a new text layer on, it will also record those as actions. The first thing we want to do is actually do a resize. So in the in the Mike's icon actions, all we did is this. So go to image, and we go down to image size. Now image size is, is the most fundamental thing of using photos. You've got to know about image size. You don't know about this then. Get out of town. Come on. First icon size is 512 by 512. Now, a couple of things. I have constrained proportion switched off. Right? Let's switch it off. Because if we were to drop a non-square file onto our action, we don't want it to image size you know, proportionally because then we will get a rectangular shaped icon and it needs to be square. So that's why I have that off and I'm going to say 512 by 512. Of course it makes sense as a designer to design it square to begin with, but this is just accounting for maybe having things slightly off. Okay, so 512 by 512. Of course it's going to be 72 dpi. And then down the bottom here, of course, it needs to be resample image because it's going to resize it. But you can see there's a number of different options for the way that we do this. Now, because we're going to be reducing from a larger uh, file, that's the best way to do it, is let's choose bicubic sharper. Best for reduction. We're reducing the file down. Keep our icons looking nice and sharp as you resize it. That makes sense, doesn't it? That's why we, we choose that there. This image size is, is done. We'll press OK. And then we have a, over, a look at our action. And yes, it's recorded the image size. Very good. Now, the next step would be to save this file as a PNG. So, And we need to record that as well. So we go to the File menu at the top here, down to Save As. Now, we're going to choose, um, of course, we're going to choose PNG because that's a required format that we need. Of course, you could choose whatever format it is, depending on what action. And we're going to label it. So we're going to label it 512 by 5, whoop, by 512. So that when all of these action, when all of these files are saved out, then we know what size we're dealing with and we can import the correct ones. So all I do is go ahead and press save. We're not going to use the interlacing. And now we look back over at our action. And there it is we are ready to go. So from this point on, all we need to do is repeat that process and then save it out at the end. So the next one again just would be fire, uh, sorry, image, um, image size. I think the, the next one is 114, uh, 72, sample image, best for reduction, press OK, and then on and on you go. So skipping ahead, uh, we need to repeat all of those. So I've already gone ahead and, and done all of that. And at the end, the very last thing to do is close the file. We don't want to leave the file open at the end. That's the last part of the action. OK, so that bit's done. Now, how do you create the droplet? So it's very, very simple. Underneath the file menu in Photoshop, right at the, the top of screen here, we come down to automate and across to create droplet. OK, we can do these individually. The droplet is the best for this, because if we're doing it over and over, but not all at the same time, like you might do one a week or one a month, the droplet is definitely the go. Drop the file on there. Boom. Happens. So automate, create droplet. Now, what we do is I'll zoom in here for you. What we do is we get access to our action sets here. So you can see there's the default actions. Here's the one we we're just doing. And here's the one I've created earlier and the action was called icons. So it's going to play that action for us, the one that we've just recorded. That's how we access that. We also need to choose a spot uh, for where to save our um, droplet. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this the uh, our test droplet, uh, just for the sake of uh, the video, we do that. We can override the open commands, okay, because we, we're going to just drop it on there, so that's fine. We don't want we don't want any file warnings. We don't want any color profile uh, warnings either. 
And what we actually want to do is down here, um, we just want them to save onto our desktop. So that's fine. And we don't want to give them, we want to keep the document name. So we don't want to override the save as commands because that's where the file name is. We certainly don't want to do that. And if there is any errors, we can log them to a file that we can stop for them. There shouldn't be any errors. Okay. So original document name, keep the extension, which will be the .png file, uh, save it into a file. I think we're good to go here. So all we need to do is go ahead and press OK. Uh, and that will create the action for us, or the droplet rather. Let's give it a little test. Close that file. Jump back to our desktop. Here is the test droplet. And there's uh, one extra file, so I'll get rid of that. I'm just going to drop that onto our test droplet. Opens the file. Processes all of the images for us. Jump back out onto the desktop, and there they all are ready to import so it's a great way of just processing that file super there's no way i could do do it that fast um, any other way if you do create an action you'd like to share it with someone you you need to have them in these little sets so you put your actions in there and under the actions pop out menu which is these tiny little tiny little guys here just go ahead and click that and then you can scroll down um, and then, of course, you can load in actions that um, other people have shared with you, load actions, but also save actions there. Okay, so very good. As a matter of fact, if you look a little bit further down, there's some other actions which you can use which have been saved with Photoshop for, for adding frames to images, different image effects, um, uh, production um, actions. So you can see resizing some stuff there. Um, 640 by 40. So look, there is a ton of actions already already built there, um, but making your own is far more rewarding and far more fun. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode of Creative Suite TV and maybe it will save you a whole bunch of time if you need to do a batch action or process a whole stack of images. That's how you create droplets using actions in Photoshop CS5. Bye.